Well, now it's my pleasure uh, to announce the next speaker. The next speaker is Annette Klotzbach from KISS and Escherich GmbH, and it will be again a very uh, interesting talk about joining metals and plastics. I'm really looking forward to it. Thank you very much. So, yes. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm very proud to present you a new technology called HiJoin to generate metal to plastic connections. And I'm very thanks to Mr. Michaelis from HiConnect that he get, uh, gives us a very good introduction into the advantages of uh, optimized connections between these kind of complete different material properties. So, um, uh, I also would start uh, to give you a little bit uh, information about my background. So, I started my scientific career at the Fraunhofer Institute for Material and Beam Technology in Dresden. And uh, there I was focusing on uh, laser materials processing, the scanning systems, high power systems for welding, cutting, etc., and structuring. And uh, afterwards, uh, I had the possibility to take over the responsibility of our adhesive bonding and composite group at the Institute. And there I started to think of adhesive bonding and of the advantages and disadvantages. And so I started to, yes, to get any ideas how to find a solution which is easier uh, uh, which uses no additional material to make connections between metal to plastics. And uh, after five or six years uh, working as a group leader, uh, I started together with a colleague of mine uh, to jump to company Kist and Escherich, and there we uh, start to commercialize this kind of the so-called thermal direct joining process for metal to plastics. And for that, I would like to introduce you a little bit on that. So uh, first, uh, I would like to show you only what is Kisten Escherich doing uh, uh, within this time. Then I will give you a short introduction to the process itself with the advantages, uh, some uh, use cases, as well as then uh, I would like to, um, yes, give you a little bit uh, scientific details about the pretreatment we use for this process, and then some application uh, uh, examples I would like to do. So, uh, Chris and Escherich, uh, these are leading experts in static control and surface cleaning systems. So, and they are on the market since 40 years. And uh, last year we started to enlarge our product portfolio, which was uh, actually uh, mostly from, um, is there also a pointer there? A laser pointer? Oh, oh, sorry. Okay. So uh, we, uh, our product portfolio are integrable cleaning systems like here to be seen, uh, construction uh, systems and specialized for uh, uh, customer solutions, we develop also special machines for cleaning. And what we do right now, we start to offering joining machines for that. So the process uh, I'd like to introduce to you uh, is so-called thermal direct joining. So we have a metal part uh, on the bottom side here, the gray part and then the plastic part, and we press both parts together. And by pressing these parts together, we in situ heat up the metal part locally by induction heating. And then uh, the plastic part, the black one here, uh, can melt and can wet the metal surface. And after cooling down, we have the connection. So, and as you can imagine, uh, a PP material, for example, will not wet very, very properly on the metal surface. And that's why we need the pretreatment. Metal pretreatment, uh, we do. This can be a typical uh, activation process, a coating, a primer solution, or it can be also a roughening process. 
and laser can be a good solution for that. So, and, uh, but uh, the joining process itself, these are these three steps. So, uh, to give you a very uh, quick video, uh, what we presented at the fair and uh, the FACOMA fair uh, last autumn, you see here our pick and place robot puts one piece of metal into our joining machine, then the plastic part. The plastic pad has to be a thermoplastic material. And then our press module, press both parts together, heat up one and a half second, and then uh, the cooling down was done. And then afterwards, uh, uh, the pick and place robot can put out the part. And then we have here, like here to be seen, like a business card size, uh, 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 as a giveaway then there. And if you are interested in these uh, uh, samples here, then please come to our booth. Uh, it's an ex exhibition in A25. Yes, so what are the key facts of this technology? So we get a stable connection without any additional material. That's one point. Then it's an alternative really to adhesive bonding or screws or rivets. And uh, we can also join complex structures. And uh, we get a flexibility by exchangeable heating tools. And every part has to have a, a special kind of uh, joining tool, but we can exchange them very quickly. So, and you see here on the, on the bottom left side an overview about the materials we have already tested. So also the 3D printed surfaces can be fit very good for these connections. So we, we tested, for example, titanium, additive manufactured titanium parts connected with uh, carbon fiber reinforced peak material. This was also a very good connection we generated by this. And the connection is uh, durable. Uh, strengths compared to a structural strengths of uh, to a structural bond of adhesive bonding of metal to plastics, and we have also good aging stability and the media tightness if it's required. So, um, as you know, I'm coming from a research uh, institute, and there why uh, that's why we did a lot of comparison tests, and here you see. Uh, our typical test specimen where we use a metal sheet, a uh, tensile shear test specimen and the plastic sheet, that's a black one, and we press both parts together, heat from the bottom the metal part, only a couple of seconds, you see here uh, for five millimeter aluminum, 2.2 seconds joining time and 1.1 uh, second joining time for the aluminum. And we get the connection, and by that we did comparison tests uh, dealing with this strength. So, um, of course, the main important point is these, uh, what are the pain points for the customers. The first one, of course, that's the joining time has to be as quick as possible, so then you will be cost effective. So we think that we can uh, generate uh, connections between one to three seconds per area, and that's very quick compared to adhesive bonding processes. Then the second point is the reliability. So, and, and the, the importance of our process is that it's not an adhesive bond, like an adhesive bonding by uh, coming from the surface, but we have a microscopic form and force fit, and this enables us very strong connections. So we don't need any materials, so you have no waste during processing. So, and we have also the possibility to have a reverse processing. So, and that means that if you think of during development of your parts itself, that uh, you can disassemble the parts. I did a very uh, rough schedule of that. The gray one, for example, are the metal parts, the blue one, the plastic parts. So by, by assembly, we press both parts together, heat up, and then the connection is done. And by disassembly, we heat up the parts and put the parts out of the way. And then we have really a good, um, yes, uh, 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 recycling and repair strategy. So, 
And uh, uh, nevertheless, also material and, and energy consumption is very important, uh, actually. So, and we did also some uh, life cycle analysis on that, that because of our process by induction heating only locally, the area we would like to connect, we are very, uh, yes, um, effective by heating and then cooling down of the parts itself. So, to classify uh, uh, to all the other possibilities to make connection between metal to plastics, I try to, to do this kind of uh, sketch here. High productivity, of course, screws, rivets, so these are very, very good. Part complexity, there the adhesive bonding process is good, and we think that we are here a little bit between, of course, on the upper right side, as it has to be. So, and we have the advantage, especially also in combination with the inward assembly system, that we don't need additional material, and we also have a, a possibility to disassembly or dismount very quickly. So, two words about the strengths, how we can improve the strengths. So, um, you see on the left-hand side, which is possible to, uh, to do, we, as I have uh, told you, focus mostly on laser structuring. I will show you also that it uh, could be a very quick process itself. And, uh, but we can also use chemical etching or other systems. Uh, this is uh, one, uh, yes, uh, image or video where you see uh, every time where you see the lightning of the laser beam, this is a 55 by 15 millimeter structuring process. And for these kind of, um, yes, uh, business cards uh, like uh, giveaways, and so you get, can imagine that it's a very quick pretreatment process. It's not comparable to an adhesive bonding process, uh, a pretreatment process, because it's very rough uh, structuring, which enables us these high strengths. So we did comparison tests then also uh, based on the um, uh, Dean ISO 1465. I would like to jump a little bit quicker over that. Uh, if you are interested in, I can also share the slides of that. So you see here, we, we did all the parameters uh, compared with a PA6, glass fiber reinforced PA6 matrix material, two millimeter, uh, in combination with a two millimeter aluminum. And what we see here, of course, if we do uh, uh, joining with the blank substrate, there's no connection at all. Sandblasting, it's okay, but uh, we can double this by a laser treatment, pretreatment process. And as you see here, we also did tested different kind of materials, also with different uh, uh, strengths we generated. And we did also some tests on head pull testing, which is also interesting uh, to, to know. And uh, yes, and there we find also that it's also good to use a kind of laser structuring to have this kind of uh, interconnection between metal to plastics. Range of services we offer, uh, yes, starting from feasibility tests of the material can be connected, then prototyping and then building the machines for you. And uh, yes, one, uh, yes, I think the video doesn't, the uh, integration is not possible. Maybe you can start the video on the, the right hand side, yes. So this is one video on the, okay. So, um, no, no, never mind, so I, I think, we put the part on the first part on it, metal part, then the plastic part on it, and then heat up, cool down, and then the connection will be done. And the same we did also uh, to this kind of hybrid housing demonstrator, yes, to optimize or to, to think new how to or where to use plastic and where to use metal sheets. And here, this is a, a aluminum board alloy on the lower side of this housing demonstrator for cooling the elements. And then we have the cover 
outside made of plastic. And so we are very uh, quick in producing much more complex parts. The parts can be in the range of 800 to 600 millimeter. That's the maximum range we are offering machines. So that's one thing. So pin structure, uh, there was also a, a video. I showed you the results there. So, and I think, oh, here the video is running. So, yes, we press the parts. You see here the induction uh, heating tool, and we press the, the pin on to the structure, and this can be also coupled to a robot system that you can make the fixing on, on every area where you like to, to implement your structure. Yes, plastic-plastic uh, connections is also possible by using a so-called eight element, a metallic eight element. Yes, uh, but also uh, you see here in the uh, second right uh, image, that's a transparent connection. Yes, and um, yes, at nearly at the end, uh, I would like to give you an uh, overview what we are thinking, where uh, the technology can be used. So that means uh, we can uh, produce hybrid parts, that's why we are all here. So, but we can also uh, realize media tight connections between metal to plastic for heat exchangers, whatever. And we can also assemble plugs, sockets, whatever, onto large uh, metal structures and um, can substitute uh, connections, uh, plastic connections, for example. So. Key points, connection within seconds, no additional material, also new material combinations, reproducible joint quality and easy part and repair. This is our overview, what we are offering as, a, as products. So if you are interested uh, or attend at the Automatica, then you're very welcome to uh, show our system running directly. We have there also our uh, modular pressing gun available and then I would like to summarize. First thing, uh, we are able to generate metal plastic connections. Yes, and we can substitute adhesive bonding or screwing. And the uh, third part, I think it's very important that we can assemble and disassemble with one process strategy. And uh, we are able to offer machines and equipment for automated assembly for you. And thank you very much. Yes, thank you very much, Ms. Klotzbach, for this great presentation. I do have a few questions, but before I ask them, I want to give the audience a chance. I don't see a question for now, so I start. Uh, thank you very much again. Um, I think just a comment. Uh, ju I think it's 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 uh, we need technologies like the ones that you've shown because you mentioned it. I think the key is uh, also the disassembly uh, potential and the capability. Just heat it up and and put it put apart. Um, I was wondering uh, during your presentation. Okay, how does the pre treatment work? Then you showed the, your laser machine to to in, in increase uh, the roughness, uh, get it get it onto the part. What about more complex structures? So I was wondering, uh, you, you, you were showing uh, your controlled environment with the flat plates. What happens if I get more curved, more complex parts? A, and is it possible, I think, and I think you've now, you've last on the last slide, you have indicated a project already, or product, or shown a product already. Uh, I, I remember, I, I, I envision the assembly line where you have the two robots coming from two sides, like spot welding, and yeah. then do, do on complex parts uh, uh, your, uh, apply your technology. You are on the way to that, probably. Yes, right? on the that, path. that's why we are uh, uh, answering your last question. Uh, that's why we develop this kind of uh, integrable module. This has a C, um, yes, C shape design, but in general, it's a system uh, uh, with a Pressing module, heating module integrated, and this can be mounted onto a robot. And so, like a normal resistant spot welding gun, it can be, uh, yes, realized the joining, the pressing of the plastic part to the metal structure and joining heating uh, within one step. 
And so you're very flexible also to add to different positions on the, on the part itself. So this, this is one point. That's why we are focusing also on these much easier to integrate uh, parts. But I think we, uh, or most of our applications are actually from the uh, electronics industry. And so you have uh, aluminum cast, uh, uh, yes, housing, and there you have a plastic top connector or on the side a connector. And there you mostly have, uh, yes, flat areas. Mm -hmm. And so our machines are very easy. You, you have your, your uh, workpiece carrier system, the parts go inside, then we repress the parts, we heat up the parts, cool down, and then the part, the complete closed part can be moved out of the way. And so it, that's, uh, this is the actual focusing, but of course the mod modularity and the ease, uh, we have to make sure that the process can be as easy integrate as a normal screwing system or yeah. whatever. Also with the surface preparation, right? Yes. That you maybe also yes. mount a la the laser yes. roughening system on the on the gantry and have yes. your complex curved. I yes. mean, it, I know that with reflections and all these kind of things, that you have uh, to consider that probably. But um, I I'd assume you would have to first do the surface preparation and then do the kind of spot-like welding step afterwards, right? Yes, but uh, the surface preparation is, compl is a complete separate process. So it can be done by a service provider, yeah, which, okay. which, yes, a completely separate process. Okay. And of course, uh, there is, uh, uh, oh, I'm coming from the laser, uh, yes, uh, scanning development. And so there's a robot guided scanning system yeah. available. And so like it, it's, it's well known from remote welding from Trump, et cetera. And they weld uh, also with a robot system, uh, yes, C-shaped uh, welds and area. And with the same equipment, we can use these kind of pretreatment. And this is, this is uh, the, the, the main advantage. That's why we are saying also, it is a, it's a little bit expensive laser, but it's really effective and flexible and Everybody has the laser source at house. And you don't have the glue remainders on your parts when you separate them, right? So it's yes. you'd have no, no. Uh, you have to you clear waste streams, plastic and yes. metal afterwards. Yeah. So, yes, okay. Ms. Klotzow, thank you very much. Visit thank the booth of Kist and Escherich downstairs uh, if you have any more questions.